Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Lieutenant General Mike Plain, Military Deputy Commander at United States Southern Command. I'd like to thank Dr. Lynn Wells for his kind invitation to speak at this important event. It is truly an honor to share with you Southcom's efforts throughout Latin America and the Caribbean, as well as our approach to building sustainable resilience. On behalf of our commander, Admiral Craig Fowler, I'm privileged to describe our mission and activities, including our programs to build partner capacity, as well as our humanitarian assistance program, particularly our recent COVID relief assistance efforts to support peace, security, and prosperity in our shared neighborhood here in the Western Hemisphere. I would tell you that here at Southcom, we're working hard every single day to be the best partner possible and the most trusted neighbor throughout Latin America and the Caribbean. We support peace, uphold respect for democracy and human rights, and work 24 seven to counter security threats throughout the region, all in close cooperation with our committed partners in the hemisphere. I assure you that Southcom's enduring partnership with security forces across the region contributes substantially to strengthening our security and our relationships in meaningful and lasting ways. I think it's important to acknowledge the wide variety of security threats, both natural and man-made, at work in our hemisphere. Here at Southcom, we describe this as a vicious circle of threats. It starts with young democracies and their still developing legal frameworks, and then extends to the more established democracies, both of which are under assault every single day from the corrosive activities of transnational criminal organizations flush with cash. That makes the region even more susceptible to corruption. While exacerbating these challenges are the self-enriching ventures of external state actors that thrive on non-transparent political and business deals to advance their own interests without regard to the long-term impact on the stability and prosperity of the region. Against this backdrop of this vicious circle of threats, we see virtually every type of natural disaster known to humankind. Floods, fires, landslides, earthquakes, tsunamis, volcanic eruptions, hurricanes, and more. And we usually see each of these natural disasters occurring every single year. While countries throughout the region have a wide range of abilities to cope with these disasters, I would tell you one of our greatest strengths is our ability to work with our allies and partners, as well as our collaboration and cooperation with regional or organizations like the Regional Security System that enables us to contribute to a more resilient response to all of these security threats. And now, on top of all of those other threats, we have the worst pandemic we've seen in more than a century sweeping the globe. And our hemisphere has been heavily impacted by COVID. In short, we are concerned for the stability of the region, given the increasing fragility of the region. In recent weeks, the world saw Latin America and the Caribbean tragically surpass 300,000 registered deaths from COVID-19. Concerned for the well-being of our neighbors, Southcom immediately began supporting the region's response to the pandemic in March as part of a larger U.S. government effort to support our friends and neighbors around the world. The U.S. government leads the global response to COVID-19, pledging more than $1.7 billion in aid and has committed almost $200 million in COVID relief assistance to our region, largely through the United States Agency for International Development. In support of those efforts, to date, Southcom has funded assistance projects to 28 nations with 343 projects totaling more than $18 million since the COVID-19 crisis began. And more help is on the way. Phase one of Southcom's assistance supported an immediate response to the pandemic with more than 80 projects donating locally produced and procured personal protective equipment to first responders, medical care providers, and medical transport personnel caring for and aiding COVID-19 patients. As our neighbors began shifting their pandemic response to more long-term prevention and mitigation efforts, Southcom transitioned to the second phase of our assistance, funding the donation of 24 field hospitals to 11 nations, with the first three hospitals arriving in Costa Rica on 18 August. These mobile hospitals will help communities care for infected patients while they continue their efforts to prevent new infections 
and reduce the presence and effect of the virus. I would note a few other examples in our rapid support to our neighbors in the region. On June 30th, a U.S. Air Force C-17 aircraft transported a large donation of more than 44,000 pounds of humanitarian aid supplies to Soto Cano Air Base, Honduras, delivering much needed supplies to people across Honduras to help prevent the spread of COVID-19. We had a similar relief mission delivering food aid to El Salvador under the Denton Airlift Program. To date, the United States has helped our neighbors in the Dominican Republic secure more than $1 million in personal protective equipment, ventilators, and raw materials for masks. We have also recently completed field hospital donations there as well. In Guatemala, the United States has donated more than $1.9 million worth of personal protective equipment, medical supplies, and has procured two field hospitals to be shipped in the coming weeks to help the Guatemalan government combat COVID-19. And just last month, a U.S. Air Force C-17 cargo aircraft delivered a Southcom donated 70 patient field hospital to Kingston, Jamaica to assist our friends there as they care for their COVID-19 positive patients, increasing the government of Jamaica's capacity by 20%. Jamaica is now the fourth of 11 partner nations that we are supporting who have requested field hospitals for COVID relief assistance. These types of projects are strong examples of how neighbors help neighbors in times of need and clearly demonstrates that by working together, we can ease the impacts of this pandemic in our region. I'd like to take just a minute or two and talk about Southcom's long-term security cooperation and exercise efforts throughout our shared neighborhood, how we are addressing the broader set of threats represented by the vicious circle. I would tell you that building partner capacity, whether at the tactical, operational, or institutional level, remains the primary way we improve interoperability amongst ourselves and enable our partners to take the lead in countering transnational threats. We conduct cyber training and capacity building with partners like Chile, Argentina, and Brazil in an effort to build defensive cyber capabilities and establish shared cyber situational awareness in the region. We continue to work closely with other U.S. combatant commands, the Office of the Secretary of Defense, and the Joint Staff to ensure globally integrated plans, operations, and exercises reflect the threats and opportunities in this hemisphere. In the Caribbean and Central America, we continue to focus our capacity building efforts on improving border security, enhancing drug interdiction rates while countering transnational criminal organizations, and strengthening overall institutional effectiveness. Jamaica has now integrated its self-funded maritime patrol aircraft into the premier organization for counter-drug operations our Joint Interagency Task Force South and Key West, enhancing our operational reach and effectiveness. After receiving sustained training by U.S. Naval Special Warfare Teams, Guatemala's Fuerzas Especiales Navales, or Naval Special Forces, is now entirely self-sufficient and responsible for more than 80 percent of Guatemala's drug seizures. Like Guatemala, Costa Rica, Panama, and El Salvador also are applying U.S. provided training and equipment to regularly counter the illicit activities of transnational criminal organizations, at times interdicting drug shipments more than 100 miles from shore, keeping those drugs off the streets of cities across America, from L.A. to Tulsa and Providence, while denying those ill-gotten gains to transnational criminal organizations. Similarly, Honduras, Guatemala, and El Salvador are leveraging our civil affairs support and humanitarian assistance program to better address factors driving violence and migration to our doorstep. Additionally, the William J. Perry Center for Hemispheric Defense Studies is a force multiplier across the region, helping us deliver the right focused education and support at the strategic level, reinforcing accountability and transparency in defense institutions. To ensure we can operate like we train, Southcom leads several annual exercises with interagency partners and partner nations to improve interoperability, preparedness, and response to all of these security threats to include the possibility of terrorist attack. I would tell you that our neighbors are taking increasing steps 
to recognize and address the threat of terrorism in our hemisphere, as evidenced by the Caribbean community's development of a regional counterterrorism strategy in collaboration with the U.S. Department of State and U.S. Southcom. In addition to these efforts, we work with the Defense Threat Reduction Agency to help regional partners build their capacity to combat weapons of mass destruction, another issue of growing interest to several partner nations. We work closely with lead federal agencies and regional partners to detect and disrupt terrorist activity and strengthen counterterrorism legislation. Trinidad and Tobago recently strengthened its counterterrorism legislation, including the creation of several new terrorism-related criminal offenses, and other countries are also updating their legal frameworks. In collaboration with the FBI, the Department of Homeland Security, and other interagency partners, we work with Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Peru, and others to share information and strengthen regional capacity to disrupt extremist threats. U.S. training and biometrics equipment are improving the ability of our partners to know who is entering their countries and to better control illegal movements across their borders. Finally, the U.S. military has a history of supporting USAID-led relief missions and working with international relief organizations and host countries to aid people impacted by disasters. In 2018, our command sponsored a multinational disaster relief exercise hosted by Guatemala with a simulated response to an eruption of the Fuego volcano. More than a dozen nations participated in the annual exercise called Fuerzas Aliadas Humanitarias, or Humanitarian Allied Forces, including residents of the communities of La Trinidad and La Reina, which are adjacent to the volcano. Southcom provided assistance to Guatemala to help it prepare for natural disasters, including the construction and donation of an emergency operations center and a disaster relief warehouse in Guatemala's Escuntla Department. In June of that same year, the volcano erupted and the Guatemalan National Coordinator for Disaster Reduction activated and utilized that very center. Additionally, the government of Guatemala requested assistance through the U.S. Embassy in Guatemala City and granted approval for a humanitarian airlift mission. In closing, before I take a few questions that were submitted earlier, I would like to reiterate that our enduring promise to our partners in the Western Hemisphere is proven by our history and our results in humanitarian assistance program projects and building partner capacity to address the full range of threats in our shared neighborhood. Our mission and activities in the region build resilient capabilities to respond to security challenges of all types and support sustainable peace and stability in the region. Together in this enduring relationship between real friends who are also neighbors, there is one truth that can always be counted on. We are committed to upholding the security and prosperity of our shared neighborhood against all threats as we labor together to make our region safer, stronger, and more prosperous. Thank you. This has been a particularly active hurricane season in the Atlantic and the Caribbean. How has this affected Southcom's humanitarian assistance efforts? This has definitely been a very active hurricane season. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, Southcom helps our partners respond to a wide variety of threats throughout the region every year. With the U.S. Agency for International Development's Bureau of Humanitarian Affairs as the lead federal agency for the United States, formerly known as OFTA, the Office of Foreign Disaster Assistance, Southcom remains postured to respond rapidly when requested by our partners and the embassy in country. This hurricane season has not impacted Southcom's other humanitarian assistance efforts in the region to date. What is the biggest humanitarian assistance challenge in the area of responsibility beyond COVID relief assistance? Well, I would tell you there are a tremendous number of humanitarian assistance challenges throughout the region. You heard me speak of some of them earlier. The continuing unfolding humanitarian crisis in Venezuela is heartbreaking. You have to ask yourself, how can a country so rich in natural resources to include some of the largest known oil reserves in the world 
let itself be led down a path where its people can't get gas for their cars, where they can't feed their people or supply reliable power or running water. These types of conditions spurred by the mismanagement of the corrupt and repressive Maduro regime have caused nearly five million Venezuelans to flee their homeland over the last several years. It's the second largest migrant crisis in the world behind Syria. Truly, it is heartbreaking. And we all have to thank countries like Colombia, Peru, Brazil, Chile, and many others throughout Latin America and the Caribbean who have accepted these nearly five million Venezuelan migrants into their countries. On a smaller scale than Venezuela, I would tell you that we also have current challenges with executing our humanitarian uh, assistance construction projects, international travel restrictions, which have been vital to mitigate the spread of COVID-19, have also limited the ability of our engineers to move throughout the region and conduct, a site, conduct site assessments for our construction projects. I would tell you we've not been idle, though. We've used this time for planning and analysis to resume these efforts as rapidly as possible once conditions permit. But these conditions notwithstanding, we still have been able to deliver field hospitals to Costa Rica, the Dominican Republic, Jamaica, Panama, Guatemala, and El Salvador. There are countries remaining to receive field hospitals are Brazil, Ecuador, Peru, Chile, and Uruguay. So I would say we work with our colleagues across the full range of U.S. federal agencies to ensure we're an active participant in a whole of government response to support the needs of our partners. How can industry best help Southcom in its various missions to realize an enduring promise for the Americas? What's the process for acquiring useful capabilities that business might bring to the table? An example via Responsive Strategic Sourcing for Services, or RS3. Thanks. Businesses bring specialized sector expertise. Mining is one example. Uh, and you have a shared interest in promoting disaster resilience. I would say that's applicable to the shipping industry. Similarly, businesses gain positive brand association from working with Southcom as you're able to better align your corporate social responsibility programs with Southcom operations, activities, and investments to optimize impact throughout the region. But to be perfectly clear with you, I have to emphasize to our business partners and industry that any of your cooperation with Southcom in this fashion is strictly pro bono. We are unable to engage in business development on your behalf. So I would also encourage you to contact the U.S. Embassy in countries that you're interested in developing a business relationship with. Partnerships with businesses are critical to the overall DOD mission, certainly to the Southcom strategy and our campaign plan and the supporting doctrine of integrated campaigning and interorganizational cooperation. The Department of Defense understands we're moving into an increasingly complex and interdependent global environment. And given these realities, DOD benefits from collaboration with non-federal non entities in the private sector and with nonprofit organizations. Our Southcom campaign plan lists the strat strategic priorities of our command and provides the best framework for the types of challenges we face every day. For technical solutions, industry partners can reach out to our resource and analysis director, we call it the J8, to transmit uh, what you have uh, and then have your solutions vetted. This process is similar to other DOD processes for unsolicited proposals and provides the most expedient process for consideration of your capabilities. I would like to take a minute uh, here at the end of the question and answer period and say in closing once again, thank you to Dr. Wells for the opportunity to address this august gathering. I wish we could do this in person, but I think we've all built and stretched new organizational muscle fibers to remain connected and interact effectively, even when we cannot be physically present in the same space together. That's a skill set we should continue to exercise as we go forward. Thank you again for taking the time to hear how United States Southern Command views and confronts the many security challenges in our shared neighborhood. Working together, shoulder to shoulder, with like-minded partners and friends who share our deepest and dearest values of democracy, respect for human rights, and the rule of law, 
Together we can address and overcome these threats and ensure the safety, stability, security, and prosperity of our hemisphere for decades to come. Thank you very much.